Buen Vendido. The Spirit's flame shines in our eyes and hearts as we gather to give thanks and praise. And please remain seated until the banners are brought in. Thank you. Our gathering song this morning is number 418, One Spirit, One Church. Anyway, uh, we think we got our sound system problem figured out, maybe. Uh, it's one of the floor speakers was in the wrong spot. Anyway, spero de I hope so. Nomen de Padre y Espíritu Santo. I'm sorry, I'm, I meant to do that in English. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> the Lord be with you. We have a baptism today, which is kind of appropriate for the great feast of Pentecost, so we ask our parents and godparents, padres, padrinos, up in front. Did you warn these guys about this? <laughs> and dad is holding uh, Charlie, already baptized. Now Charlie was a, a perfect child until he turned about 14 or 15 months. And now normally all he does is talk all the way through mass. <laughs> so I think he's called to be a priest maybe, to babble. <laughs> and then we have a little girl here, so I'll, uh, these are God's people that are going to help you in your task as uh, parents and godparents and grandparents and others. And so, what name do you give your little girl? Josie. What are you asking today? Very good. You have asked to have Josie baptized. In doing so, 
you are accepting responsibility to, to teach and form her in the ways of faith. It will be your duty to help her understand the commandments that God has taught, uh, to love God and love neighbor. Are you ready for that? Godparents ready to help? Now, there's lots you guys can do as godparents. Just so you know, my godfather, every Christmas gave me a Hershey chocolate bar, and there's other things you can do, though, okay? <laughs> Josie, Ann, I believe, right? Josie Ann, and this is Charlie. <laughs> Josie Ann, uh, the faith community welcomes you with great joy in the name of that community and Christ our Savior. I claim you by the sign of the cross on your forehead and invite your parents and godparents to claim you with that same sign of victory over all things, sin, suffering, and death itself. Okay, we'll see you a little while later after the homily, but since it's such a special day, our joint choir wants to sing the Gloria. who in the mystery of today's great feast sanctifies your entire church in every people and every nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with that divine grace at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then, they appeared, then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues, as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded, and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia 
and Pamphylia, Egypt and the districts of Libya near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos, nadie puede llamar a Jesús Señor si no es bajo la acción del Espíritu Santo. Hay diferentes dones, pero el Espíritu es el mismo. Hay diferentes servicios, pero el Señor es el mismo. Hay diferentes actividades, pero Dios que hace todo, en todos es el mismo. En cada uno se manifiesta el Espíritu para el bien común. Porque así, como el cuerpo es uno y tiene muchos miembros, todos y ellos, a pesar de ser muchos, forman un solo cuerpo. Así también es Cristo. Porque todos nosotros, seamos judíos o no judíos, esclavos o libres, hemos sido bautizados en un mismo espíritu para formar un solo cuerpo y a todos se nos ha dado a beber del mismo espíritu palabra de Dios Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya. 
fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good to see you all. Uh, the masses this weekend have been good. Uh, although, as you know, it's a nice weekend. Kids are out of school. A lot of things you can do. Chelsea was uh, kind of light last night. Uh, but they had quite a bit of red, but I think you guys win the prize today. Uh, Chelsea ran, I thought, about 40, 45% red. I think we're running about 60% or better here. One gal came in, Chelsea, you know, and... Uh, I got this red clergy shirt that I got. I ordered it actually Monday, got it Wednesday. But I <laughs> couldn't wear it last night. I don't know what happened, but I tried to wash it and everything, and I put it on, and it was just ugh, full of stains. So uh, <laughs> I used last night, I used, uh, no, before I went to Chelsea, I used, uh, no, I'm not an expert on this, but uh, ox something? Oxyclean. And it said, spray any spots, even dried in spots, soak them for 10 minutes. So I sprayed that shirt all over the place. And then I put it, and I had washed it separately before. So I put it in the, I had the washer come up, put it on warm water with an extra rinse. And I tossed it in. I thought I had to throw the shirt out, folks. It looked, ugh. And I got back and I took it out. It looked great. And then I figured, I'm not going to take another chance. So instead of putting it in the dryer, I just got a plastic hanger and hung it up, and it was dry this morning. So anyway, anyway, you can tell me if you think I look good in red. <laughs> anyway, uh, I told the people last night it will be even more true at this Mass. The, the first reading at the, the vigil Masses are different. The first reading was Genesis, the Tower of Babel. So I told them I had a revelation from the Holy Spirit, and I was told not to babble away today. <laughs> and then actually, folks, uh, now I don't think I've ever done this I, I'm not sure positive, but you can actually do Pentecost kind of like the Easter Vigil. You can have six or seven readings before the gospel. Now, you don't have the baptism and stuff, but we didn't do that. Okay. And Belle Plain, uh light but good, and they were in good spirits. <laughs> and here, a nice crowd today. I'd say we're up at least 100, so thanks for coming. Okay. Folks, uh, kind of a simple message today. Uh, now, if you're older, in other words, roughly my age or so, uh, you probably have some memory of the old, the good old days, so to speak. They weren't always good. The Latin Mass. And now you might want to think of the church in uh, Chelsea, because uh, this is a newer church, or think of the old church here. So in front they had the high altar. You know, right smack in the center was the tabernacle, the tabernacle. And then in the high altar they had statues of saints and all that kind of stuff. It was really pretty nice. When I was a kid, you know, I served the Mass in Latin, and we had a high altar in St. Anthony's, and then after Vatican II, 
Now, folks, right after Vatican II, my opinion, you can toss it out if you don't want it, but some of the stuff they did for church renovation was awful. And in my home parish, he took out that beautiful high altar, which, he could, which could have been left, and they put in this ugly plywood thing. And I thought, ugh, disgusting. Now the church today, St. Anthony's, is beautiful, beautiful. But anyway, so the priest would have his back to you. In fact, folks, if you think about it, in a regular church, now this is a little bit rounded, but in a regular church, all you're looking at in the old days was everybody's back. So the priest was up here, back to you. Now maybe he turned around, I'm not an expert in the Latin Mass. I could do a Latin Mass, I, I have the ability, but I don't know all the routines, okay? I, th I think when he blessed the people, he would turn around and go like that. And then the servers were there, and they saw his back. And then you were out yonder, and all you saw was the back of the priest and the back of the servers and everybody else's back. <laughs> anyway, uh, things have changed. Uh, if you've been to Ames, many of you probably have the church there. I was, someone talked to me about it today, but in Ames, the church is like this, and all the pews on this side face center, all the pews on this side face center, and the altar, in the center is the altar, and the ambo, that's the podium, ambo we call it, and whatever else they have there. And so, uh, instead of seeing everybody's back, uh, the priest is in the center, actually facing the outside door, kind of like I'm doing, and, uh, and then everybody here sees everybody over there. Now, I don't know how they preach. Somebody I talked to said he'd been to church there, but he couldn't remember how they did it either. I said, do they talk like this, and then go like this, or do they just talk to the outside door? And he said, I thought, I think they talked to the outside door. <laughs> and then folks are, now this church is somewhat rounded, but there are churches that are built 360 round. And so, in this center, is the altar and then the people who are surrounding they're all looking at each other and and the priest and then also toward the center normally rather than in back like we have it here toward the center is the baptismal font I'm trying to remember the name of the church but there's this church in cedar rapids anyway it's a nice church new church and they have the font not nearly as big as this one more more the size of like that and if i remember right I've never been there for mass, I don't think. Anyway, the font is down in the floor. <laughs> then when you have a baptism, the priest pushes a button and it comes up or something like that, I don't know. But the idea, folks, is we, what we did, and again, there was a lot of wonderful things in the old mass of, I think it was uh, Paul V, whoever did it, the Pope, whoever did it, the Latin mass. There was a lot of beauty in that mass, and there was some stabilization because they wanted to kind of make things not so different all over. But after Vatican II, they realized that we're not really meant to spend our life just looking at everybody's back. We're meant to face one another, okay? So there was an article in the magazine America, that's the, the America magazine published by the Jesuits, which I, I read every week. Sometimes they have some really good articles, sometimes they're not so much, but be that as it may. This, this priest, <clears throat> about my vintage, now, I was a delayed vocation because of my service days and education stuff. But I think this priest was about 43 years ordained, and he wrote an article, What I Would Tell a Newly Ordained Priest. Okay? We ordained five in our diocese this year. Should be two more next year. And to be honest, folks, with our archbishop, pray that he stays healthy. He should be getting a little better now, but he's supposed to take it easy for till Labor Day or so. But I am not worried about vocations because I'm, I've told you this. You know, when I decided to become a priest, I knew I wanted to be a priest, but I didn't know where to go. So I shopped around a little bit. But if I had met Archbishop Jacobs, I wouldn't have had to shop around because he's such a good man of God. So anyway, in this article, the priest said two things. <clears throat> the first thing he said, this, he, he observed an ordination, some diocese in the country, and after, and of course, folks, the guys getting ordained, if you've ever been to ordination, they're in front, they have their back to the people, and then at a certain point, when it gets around ordination time, they come up and they lay down on the ground, okay, pretty much back to everybody. Then they get up, and they eventually go to the bishop, 
and pretend stands the bishop there, but the bishop probably would be here. And the bishop lays hands on their head, their backs are to the people, and then they come up to be anointed, <clears throat> and the bishop anoints them with chrism on the palm of their hands. Now I asked uh, Deacon Joe this, I wonder if you know this, Dan. Now this doesn't apply to you because you don't do the anointing of the sick. I did not, I'm not sure this is gospel, but I was told this by a, an older priest, whoever it was, that when you anoint for a priest, when you anoint them, you don't anoint them on the palm of their hands because that's where they were anointed at ordination. You anoint them on the top of their hands. You ever hear that? Yeah. I'm not sure that's right, but anyway, somebody that I respected told me that. It might be right, it might not be. Okay. So the priest said, the, the bishop at the end of this liturgy, where all he had seen was the back of these guys, must or may no more or less. You know, they might have seen him when they put on their chasuble. You know, he turned around and put the chasuble on. But at the end of it, he told the five guys, six, eight, whatever it was, he said, turn around, turn around. And they turned around to the people and everybody clapped, everybody applauded. Now, why did they applaud? Like today, when Josie gets baptized, I'll have uh, you or the godmother or whoever wants to hold the child up. I usually don't do it, okay? Not that I don't trust myself, but I think it's better for someone else to do it. And uh, everybody's going to applaud. Now, why are they applauding? Are they congratula congratulating the young men? I suppose. But folks, I think it's a lot more than that. Whenever we see someone make a real faith commitment, you know, not lip service, when they make a faith commitment of a baptism, like our parents today, a marriage where they really promise lifelong life-giving, uh, faithful marriage, confirmation, ordination, you name it, first communion, first penance, that gives us hope that the Spirit is alive in the church and bringing forth new people to be blessed by all those gifts. And so we applaud because all of a sudden, like today, and to some extent, we see life, we see light, we see fire. We see people willing to commit their life and the life of their children to God that they might become truly the person they're meant to be rather than do what everyone else does. And folks, you know, turn around. He said, I would tell these guys to turn around. What does he mean by that? He means to get away from your routine, to get away from your comfort zone, get away from doing what you always do. We all do that, myself included. We kind of like to stay comfortable. We come to church. No, I, this, I, you know, I pick on you guys about this. And you always sit in the same pew. Why? Well, comfortable there, you know. I talked to a gal last night in Chelsea. <clears throat> and that's not even Charlie back there making that noise. Okay. <laughs> Charlie's being very good. <laughs> I think he wants to, his sister to have a good baptism. Anyway, uh, this gal is in Chelsea. She comes early, 30, 35 minutes for a mass. I mean, there are some people, folks, that... Believe it or not, they come 30, even 45 minutes before Mass. I try to, if I can, I can't do it here, but if I can, I try to get there that early too. But anyway, so she said, Father, I said, why don't you sit someplace else? She said, I sit here and nobody sits next to me. And I said, isn't that the point of what I just said? You're focused on yourself. Nobody sits next to me. Why don't you get up and sit next to someone else? Someone in front, someone in back. Someone on the right side, someone in the middle, someone on the left side, someone of a different color, someone that is wealthy, someone that is poor, someone that maybe smells not really good today, <laughs> or someone that speaks a different language. That's what it's all about. Not to stay where we are, always in our comfort zone. We, do, we all do a lot of that. I do too. But to turn around, because folks, basically, if you always stay and do what you want to do, and there are people that do this, of every persuasion, there's been popes, bishops, cardinals, priests, monsignors, religious, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, if that is your attitude, you are living in solitary confinement. And solitary confinement is considered to be one of the worst experiences you can have if you're sent to prison. And they put some people there because what they did was so bad that are afraid if they go out in the general population, they'll be put to death, okay? So folks, 
to turn around, turn around and, and reach out and do something. You know, I, I got a call this week. Um, now I'm human, you know. They said, Father, we need to do a baptism class. Uh, it was a Hispanic couple, but the gal spoke perfect English. I thought the, the guy didn't hardly know any English at all. So I said, oh, you want to do a baptism here? She said, no, no, we're going to do it in Mexico. We're godparents, but we have to get a class. So I said, when are you free to come in? They said, Saturday morning. Now, you know, I get up early. I was up, I think I tried to stay in bed till about 4.30 this morning. But anyway, I usually up really early. I said, how about 9 o'clock? So they came in at 9, and they were really nice, you know. But I, being human and wanting to stay in my comfort zone, I was tempted to tell them a Go someplace else, you know, but I didn't. Okay, what's the second thing this, this uh, priest, experienced priest told them? He said, <clears throat> let the people love you. Let the people take care of you. Let the people respect you. Now, folks, we don't always hear what we want to hear as priests. Just last week I heard something. It wasn't really about me personally, <coughs> but I was kind of shocked But what was said. Anyway, be that as it may. We need to be corrected, all of us. Now, we don't like correction. We don't like correction. One thing about the Holy Father is, you know, he made a mis he's made mistakes in his life, and he'll be the first one to tell you that he has. He made a huge mistake in the country of Chile down in South America about things that have happened with priests that weren't good. And he was called on the carpet. And rather than say, I'm Pope, I'm right, he said, no, I was wrong, and he corrected his actions. <laughs> See, you got Charlie's getting a good competition back there today. That's great. Okay. Oh, I know what couple that is. <laughs> okay. So he said, turn around and let the people love you. And folks, this is the truth. As a priest, and Stan would probably say the same thing, when you work for the church, yeah, you deal with some difficulties. But by and large, the people are really kind, respectful, they want to do stuff for you, you know, they want to, you know, they're just really good. Now, do you, do you get some bad messages? Oh, sure. I was trying to think, now I don't have perfect memory, as you know. Oh, we got another one over there. I'll wrap it up. Okay, God's telling me to wrap it up. I think in my lifetime, 36 years now, I've gotten three what I call nasty grams. It's usually like a, it's usually a, hard copy, but sometimes an email. It's like one or two pages of the horrible thing I did. I talked to an old priest friend of mine. He's still alive. He's in his mid-80s. What do you do with those? He said, well, the first thing you do is read them. Then you decide, was I right or was I wrong? But then eventually you toss it. Because, you know, if you live with a, something like that, you'd probably get kind of grumpy, I suppose. Okay. Well, the kids are telling me to quit. So let's get parents up here now. Godmother normally holds the child for baptism, if you'd like. Your choice. You're going to come up just like you were before, turning around to face the people, and then allowing, after the baptism, the people, and they're all happy for you, to promise that they will be there for you to help to raise this little girl, Josie, and her big brother, Charlie, to become the person God wants them to be. Just the book. Just the book. Okay. <laughs> Godfather, you can hold the candle. Eventually, you'll light that off the Easter candle up yonder. And I'll give you this one, too. This is like a little stove. But Josie has a really, really nice... Uh, I've got a seashell I got from the Oregon coast, which I like to use. <clears throat> okay. Now, folks, again... This is a celebration for all of us. I mean, most of us, unless there's something wrong with you, you see a little kid, even if they're hollering, you're happy to see them, okay? And so parents and godparents, you're doing a good job with, with uh, Charlie, and I can't believe how quiet he is today. <laughs> so I ask all of you, and all, all of us respond, because we're promising to be there for these children in our own way. Do you reject Satan? I do. I do. And all his works? I do. And all the empty, attractive promises. I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, born of the Virgin, crucified, died, 
buried, risen from the dead, now seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We celebrate today the Holy Catholic Church, birthday of the church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and everlasting life. I do. This is our faith, the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Okay? So I'm going to come over here. In fact, I'm not going to use this shell. Oh, oh, thanks, Stan. Stan's got it. The, uh, now, I don't know all the details, but this water is from the River Jordan. And I, I said, make sure it's clean. It looks pretty good to me. So we're going to baptize water from the River Jordan, the same place, or water from the place where our Lord was baptized. And is your will then to baptize little Josie? Josie Ann, okay. Josie Ann, <laughs> I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And just, oh, thanks, you can take it back. And I've got a little towel here. <laughs> I'm learning to be prepared. Okay, you can pick her up a little bit. Okay. Step two. Anointing after baptism. I need the holy oils there. Bring the little cloth too, Stan, thanks. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, welcomed you into his holy people. <laughs> he now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so may you be priestly, bringing holiness to others, a prophet, giving good words to others, and a king, or you may say queen, leading others to Christ. Secondly, uh, now normally we put on a white garment. They have a beautiful garment there. We have a little baptismal stove for you. Uh, Josie Ann, you have become a new creation. Have put on Christ. See in your beautiful white garment. And it's, it's brand new for her, isn't it? Okay, okay. Uh, see in your white garment an outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that dignity unstained into the life of heaven. Oh, thank you, Stan. And now, Josie Ann, uh, you have received the light of Christ. See in the, in the Easter candle, I'm, your baptismal candle, uh, that this light, parents and godparents, is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly. You know, I've never seen her frowning the, all the time I've seen her at Mass. <laughs> oh, poor godmother. This child of yours has been enlightened by Christ. She is to walk always as a child of the light. May she keep the flame of faith alive in her heart when the Lord comes May she go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom. Let's, let's welcome her to church with a big round of applause. <laughs> time we rise I just had to get corrected uh, we're gonna have our intercessions for the mass read in both English and Spanish where's our Spanish person Hispanic person folks for the response just go along with me the response will be ora pro nobis Latin the ancient uh, language of the church ora pray pro for us pray for us ora pro nobis English first, then Spanish. That neither language nor culture prove a barrier to spread the gospel of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Para que ni el lenguaje ni la cultura impidan la predicación del Evangelio, roguemos al Señor. Te rogamos, Señor. That the family of nations live together in harmony and respect, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Para que la gran familia de naciones vivan en armonía y respeto mutuo. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. 
that those who speak in different languages understand one another through their loving actions. We pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Para que hablen diferentes idiomas, logren llegar al entendimiento mutuo por medio de su bondad. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. That the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit spread and increase. We pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Para que los dones y frutos del Espíritu Santo se multipliquen y se divulguen. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. For our children, as they begin summer vacation, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Por nuestros hijos, cuando comienzan las vacaciones de verano, roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. For our newly baptized child, Josie Kalini, that she may grow to become a wonderful believer, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Para que nuestra hija recién bautizada, Joseph Catalin, crezca para convertirse en una maravillosa creyente, roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. In, thankful, in thanksgiving and grateful appreciation for Father Mike's 14 years of ministry to St. Patrick, St. Joseph's, and St. Michael's, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Por la gratitud y agradecimiento y todo lo que nos dio el Padre Miguel en 14 años de ministerio y servicio a los miembros de la iglesia de San Patricio y las otras iglesias San José, San Miguel, que pertenecen al mismo al mismo círculo de los santos. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. Father Mike, that he has, that his retirement days be filled with very much peace, joy, love, and good health. We pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Por el Padre Miguel, que en su retiro sus días estén llenos de paz, alegría, amor y mucha salud. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. For all of our family and friends who have died and are now living in eternal life with Jesus, especially Ed and Julia Cavidra, we pray to the Lord. Ora pro nobis. Por todos, por todos en nuestra familia y amigos que murieron y que ahora viven en una eterna vida con Jesús, en especial Ed and Julia Cavidra. Roguemos al Señor. Ora pro nobis. Father, receive all our needs placed before you in faith and with expectation through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Lori and Roger Timison will bring the gifts to the altar today. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 301, O Love of God, Amor de Dios.
pray, <clears throat> pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours <coughs> be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. <coughs> Grant, we pray, O Lord, that is promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and in your grace lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord amen the Lord be with you and with your lift spirit. up your hearts we lift them up to the Lord. let us give thanks to the Lord our God <clears throat> it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty eternal God for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion you bestowed the Holy Spirit this day on those you have made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son this same Spirit as the church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God, and brought together the many languages of the earth into one grand profession of one faith. Therefore, with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim in song. Seated as you wish. Gabriel You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit <clears throat> upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. rise to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ for the, the kingdom, kingdom of the power and the glory is yours now and forever Lord Jesus Christ you said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Pentecost of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace. as you wish.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. You should enter under my roof, but only say the word. Our communion song is number 174, Resucito.
uh, Vsauce announcements. This morning, folks, I was getting dressed and uh, <laughs> and uh, the black pants I had, boy, they were, you know, they're kind of like, I'm not sure what they were, Wrangler or Carhartt, and I said, boy, they looked awful. I said, I better not wear these. So I dug around and I found a pair that looks better. And then what I, what I normally do for announcements is I stick them in my back pocket, but I forgot to put them in. <laughs> so anyway, the announcements in Belle Plaine were very short. Okay, Vac Vacation Bible School is coming up the week after the 4th of July. That's actually my last full week in the parish. You'll find out at the, whatever you call that thing, the kiosk, these bright, shiny green forms. On one side you can do English, the other side you can do Spanish. And it's available to any child. Uh, how do they have to be, Jackie? Okay, any child entering kindergarten up through about sixth? Up to 12 years old, thank you. So, uh, folks, if you, this is a really great thing. It's uh, Monday to Thursday, 6 to 8. Food, craft, prayer, teaching. Our, uh, my neighbor over here, uh, Pastor Warren Riley, the Lutheran guy, he's a good guy, by the way. He's got two dogs. Anyway, <laughs> he's funny as can be. He does a great job. But it's a really good program. So pass the word out to anyone, even if they're not in church today, anyone in the cluster that would like to do this, it's a really good experience, and Jackie works hard at it. And the title is Roar, Roar, Life is Wild, God is Good. Okay. If you're so inclined, uh, next week, uh, St. Joseph and Chelsea's having a farewell for me after that Mass at 530 if you want to go and stay, go for it. There's a table and plenty in the gathering space. Betty, what's on the table today? Onions and asparagus, okay? And lettuce. Okay. CCW meeting Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Okay. Anything I forgot to announce? Uh, I, have no, I have no information yet on that, Betty, so we thought it best not to advise. I, I guess I can say um, Ed Yupa passed away either late Friday night or early Saturday morning. The family is meeting today with Cruzy and Deacon Stan, so we won't know when it will be until that's all resolved, okay? So, uh, and is Mary, his wife Mary, Mary is a very sweet lady, probably she's very frail. And she's been in the hospital a couple of times the last couple months, so I think it's going to be hard for her. Okay. The only other thing, if you're so inclined, it is a clear day. And right now, believe it or not, uh, there's some, I'm kind of into astronomy, you know. There's some astronomical objects that are really well worth seeing. Uh, Jupiter, as close as it can be. And it's so close that if you have high quality binoculars, not the junky ones, you know. But if you have high quality binoculars, you can see the planet, the big red spot, some streaks, and the four moons. And Saturn also is in conjunction. Now don't ask me where they are because I've been too lazy to look. But anyway, Saturn is very close to Jupiter, so easy to find. And the moon, they say, right now, is as big as it will ever get all of this year. So if you can stand the mosquitoes and the gnats and all the rest of the stuff, go outside. Uh, bring a pillow maybe for your head and your best binoculars or a small telescope and you can see that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, let's just say grace because we have a nice meal over there yonder. So Lord, we ask you to bless the food we're about to receive. Bless those who prepared it for us and those who serve us. And bless us. May this food and our friendship, fellowship, may it strengthen us to be better disciples and be able to turn away turn around from ourselves, and to receive God's love and to give it away. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, lots going on today. So during the closing song, I would ask our parents and godparents and uh, newly baptized and Charlie if he wants to come, and we'll get some pictures right over here, okay? And you guys can go over yonder and start eating, and we'll join you as soon as we can.
thank our trusty servers, especially because they give the big heavy book to the littlest server, okay? Let's pray in thanksgiving. What's your name again, huh? Lizzie? Lucy, that's a great name. This little lady is called Lucy. I think Lucy comes from Luce, which means she is a person of light. <laughs> o God who bestows heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given us, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon us may retain its force, and that this spiritual food may gain us abundance of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you this beautiful Pentecost day. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I'm going to sing it, okay? Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. And our parting song. is in the Spanish hymnal, Floricanto. Is that right? Okay, uh, number 630. Alabare, and O oh, Come and Sing. <laughs> 